five o'clock somewhere, which means that it is happy hour here at Loud Poets. Welcome everyone to our brand new show. We are so incredibly excited to be launching this new project with you guys. In this first episode, we're going to explain what the heck we're talking about. What is happy hour? How does it work? What are the rules? Are there rules? Are they actually drinking? What's going on? Welcome to Happy Hour. I am joined today by the fabulous Mr. Mark Galley. Mark, what you drinking? I got I got innocent gun today. Just keep, nice. keep it simple for the start. Yeah. Nice. Basic. Solid beverage. Nice choice. McLean, Mr. Kevin McLean, welcome. What are you drinking? I am drinking peach and honeydew melon Alska cider. Why, Kevin? Aldi's is finest. That Aldi's finest <laughs> cider. Is, Nicely is done. Excellent choice. Mm. Uh, Tastes like summer. <laughs> and I am Dr. Katie Ailes. I am your host for the happy hour, and I am beyond excited for the shenaniganry. And I figured, you know, it's the first, it's the first episode. We are toasting to something new. So I have Prosecco in a fancy, oh. fancy glass. Oh. So uh, cheers, guys. Welcome to the new show. Cheers. <laughs> Normally, the beautiful, dynamic, and excellent Beck Sherwood would be joining us. However, she is currently moving house. And last I heard, she actually painted herself into a wall. <laughs> so that's been a little bit difficult to get out of. So um, if anyone knows if there's any paint stripper anywhere and could rescue Bex, that would be helpful. Uh, but she will be joining us uh, in about a month or so to join in with the happy hour shenaniganry. Mark, where's but she moving meantime, to? <laughs> How long does it take to get a paint stripper? <laughs> Wait, hang on, knows, someone left man. Leaf? She left Leaf. <laughs> no, no. We didn't think it was possible, but someone managed to do it. So uh, good honor for that. Good honor for that. Uh, but yeah, in this first episode, it is just me and the lads. Uh, so strap in. We're going to have some fun. Uh, what is happy hour? I hear you asking across the internet at a different time. Somehow, I hear your questions. We have some answers. So... Throughout April, uh, we did National Poetry Writing Month, which is NapoRimo. And you may have joined us for that. Uh, you may have checked out that show. The challenge throughout April is to write a poem every day. And we said, no, we're not going to do that because we did that last year and it was very, very hard. So this year, 2021, what we did was we wrote a poem every week and we had a show, we had this podcast, the Na Podcast, if you're one of the cool people. Uh, which and we are not. We, which we are not, no, absolutely yeah. not. Uh, it's Friday night and we're recording a podcast about poems. So, you know. Uh, but yeah, throughout NaPoWriMo, we were writing poems and we were chatting about it on this show. Um, and we were absolutely blown away by you guys and the engagement that we got with this show. There were so many people who were watching the episodes and writing along with us and asking for tips and feedback and sharing their work with us. And that's just amazing. I think especially in this year, which can be pretty isolating, it was pretty great to feel that sense of community around writing poetry. So we figured National Poetry Writing Month why is it just a month? Why isn't it National Poetry Writing Year? Why isn't every year National Poetry Writing Year? Really? It's That's not what my I question. No, it's Katie, not what I Katie is misusing the word we there. Yeah. <laughs> so I got excited and I thought, A, poetry is great. Let's write some poetry. And B, I want my own show. So welcome to Loud Poets Happy Hour. Uh, yeah, this is our, our sort of latest uh, podcast. We're so excited about it. And uh, we're going to be writing and we're going to be sharing challenges. And this is really the show where we want you guys, you viewer, to get involved. The way that the show is going to work in basic, we'll detail it throughout the show. Mark's being terrifying. The way that it's going to work is that if you sign up to our Patreon, you can set us writing challenges. We will put them into the poetic pint glass of poetic challenges. 
that was almost alliterative and then i failed the last minute are, 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 this are is... you sure are you sure that's what it's called kate yep, do, 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 do you want to do you want to you want another run at it because nope, if that's what it's called yeah. then that's what it's called yeah i mean that's what it's called but we can we can workshop it you know like we, can, we, we could we can, yep so it's it's the poetic Take. pint glass of poetic, <laughs> of poetic challenges. challenges yep that's good, what it's good. called yep on, that's, what that's the branding concise, concise. It's the branding on this project i've had one <laughs> sip of prosecco lads uh so <laughs> if you sign up to our patreon you can put in suggestions into the poetic pint glass of poetic challenges and then we will pick out those suggestions from the poetic po pint glass of poetic challenges i'm so glad we can drink on this because it really yes. takes uh, the moments make a lot easier yeah and then we have to do that writing specifically those three have to do that writing i just get to be power hungry and make them write i'll join in sometimes uh you know when i'm when i'm feeling it uh but yeah that's basically how the show is gonna work we're gonna write poems we're gonna chat about it and we really want you guys to get involved right along with us laugh at our shenaniganry because there will be a lot of shenaniganry i can guarantee you so mark how how are you feeling about happy hour are you are you feeling good are you excited i'm very i'm very excited for happy hour this is kind of i think what probably the i, think I very much enjoyed the podcast but i didn't think why can't this be every day or every week but i was like i really liked doing that for what felt very much like i've never been part of a writer's group but i've seen them on the telly and so they look really useful um and that with the combination of, of being able to, you know, the social element of being able to do it a bit more, a bit more my speed. You guys won't let me in your coffee anymore. So Mark wrote a very bad poem about coffee and he's not oh, allowed. Oh, oh, it, in poor taste, perhaps, but a bad poem. It was nasty. Oh, it's a, a nasty poem. Wrote a, a nasty poem for, by Dr. Katie Ailes. Can I get that as like a... Like one of your stick. challenges a nasty no, no, poem. A i just want that as a quote for like yeah. any future shows i do like it should be on your bio mario it should be mark yep. galley and then the quotation is he nasty, he nasty. dr kate yales and then underneath that yep. my favorite uh, bit of feedback which comes from my mum, which is not uplifting but impressive which i think as a whole is quite encapsulating of of my stuff um, but i'm very excited for happy hour i am excited for shenaniganry um I'm excited for for challenges. I I don't know what to expect so much with the challenges. I'm hoping nothing against form, but I'm hoping they're a bit, you know, both looser in some respects and also in other ones. I um, I really liked some of the stuff I was forced to do as part of you know form challenges and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm I, yeah, I'm excited. I am I am nervous. Um, but I also feel I'm like going there if there's challenges and there's I'm like I'm I think there should be punishment as well. I don't I'm you know. You all this is always where you go when we yeah. have challenges. You're like, and what if you fail? And you're like, well then you failed. That's well, you. Well then know what's it, the point not... of the challenge then? I'm like, where's Oh, the... there will be punishment. Okay, okay. I'm I'm even more excited. There will be now. punishment. Good, good. I'm very excited for punishment. But yeah, it's I'm at, very at excited. The host for... discretion. I'm excited. I'm excited for happy hour. I am also oh, excited to see more of your of your hosting so yeah, yeah cheer, cheers to everyone cheers to, to the start cheers of to, something weird mclean how are you feeling are you excited to do a little bit more writing get your sillies out yeah it's i really didn't enjoy naparimo last year uh <laughs> just because i felt like i didn't i didn't get anything complete in that and it just you know it, it felt like a lot of effort for not a huge amount of like reward in the end mm -hmm. um and i know i know you should write to develop skill and that there is always a reward every piece of practice mounts up i know that i know but uh, i didn't enjoy it and so <laughs> this year I, I i had a much better time like the the pieces i got out of it i was so happy with um most of them i had a couple that actually i have i have softened on i know we're going to talk about napod uh, naparimo and stuff a bit more in depth but yeah I, I i wasn't super excited for it i ended up having a really good time and yeah it was nice i'm excited for happier to continue because i think it's like i think having the two weeks between shows it helps and i think having like mark said something a little less strict than form um but something as more as a guideline like i think me and mark probably would agree that both of us enjoyed concrete poetry way more than we thought we would 
Hundred like, percent. In in hindsight, I think that's because it still allowed a huge range of everything else, right? It was just it was like adding a layer rather than taking away tools, and so it was. Yeah, I, I'm more excited to kind of do that. And I just wanted to point out because Kiwi's was very uh, laissez faire about, uh, and I'll join in or when I so choose. Uh, this this show is going to be accompanied by a sort of uh, additional show that Kate is going to have to do all of. So that's why she's not writing, because she is going to be doing some like, because the hope is you guys at home are going to write along with us, right? And the idea is we're going to put out some tips. Uh, and then there's going to be another video where Katie's going to kind of check in with one of us and go over our draft like where we've gotten to so far um, and fix it for us uh, so that'll be nice yeah. one of us will have a good poem every week and um, so like she is going to be doing you know some additional stuff which is why she's not writing but I imagine you'll end up just doing it anyway Katie so I like poems. I just really like poems. Yeah, so I'm me me not writing every week is not me letting myself off easy. Uh, as Kev said, uh, every Thursday, I'm going to be coming out with a different video associated with happy hours. So uh, just after this episode, the next Thursday, I will be coming up with five top tips for writing in the challenge that is chosen. And obviously, that will depend on the particular challenge that comes out of the poetic pint glass of poetic challenges. Uh, and then the Thursday after, I'm going to be checking in with one of these guys and seeing if they've written anything, you know, because <laughs> if not, that's that's going to be, be a pretty really awkward conversation. Look at the uh, video length and know how much we've done. Ooh, less than yeah. two minutes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> on, on a serious point, though, I do think because I, I should say rather than just shouting that Katie still has to work, I was very, I was very. That was the trade-off. You get to host it, but then you have to do other things. Uh, mm. So um, I'm, I'm very excited because, and I know there is the slow return to, to perhaps you know some sort of gigs happening. I know there are things potentially coming up with Fringe and things like that. So I know we're kind of moving back to that, but still restricted, still limited. And I think that's good because everyone should be safe and sensible and we shouldn't go quicker than, you know, is is safe and sensible. But I have desperately missed um, that hanging out at, at a gig and like hearing someone's poem and going, ah, oh, that's such a good idea. You know what you could do with that? You could do this and that and da 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 And someone go, ah, or you go to like that sort of chit chat and and yeah i've never been part of a writing group either mark but but i've always been part of like poets and there's always been that you know chucking stuff back and forth and challenging each other to try different stuff and get out of your comfort zone so i'm, I'm very excited about doing that when we haven't really been able to for a huge chunk of time yeah it's it's going to be good to chat through ideas and thank you for this segue, Mr. Kevin McLean. If you enjoy hearing people talk about poetry and hearing people share poetry, we have another show. We have our flagship show, The Loudcast, which Kevin hosts. Uh, and basically every two weeks it comes out and he chats to a guest. Uh, so if you have not checked out the loudcast please please do that this is going to be coming out on alternating sundays so same time and place as this one comes out you can check out the loudcast if you're listening to this as a podcast same podcast feed so super super easy uh just subscribe rate and review like do all of that awesome stuff so that we can carry on uh but before we go too deep into this episode this is a show about poems so i feel like we need some poems because otherwise it's just us you know chatting our silly mouths off so mr galley would you be up for sharing a poem with us any poem really i any i just like poem. poems any poem I, I i did suspect that there might be some shenaniganry in the form of poetry reading when Ugh. we decided to do this so i i, I do i i do have a poem and i think i am um, I think it is a, is a very good and very fitting poem for the start of this, because if you have been listening um, to the podcast, ooh, before I forget as well, just at the start, in terms of like talk about happy hour, I'm very excited. One, because it's a super sexy logo. And then two, just personal shout out. Thank you to Mr. Samuel Bidgood for like the entry music that went with it. Oh, mm. love it. Um, so yes, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, I found a poem that is, that is titled um, Sit, Listen and Drink. 
um, that I've never read to, I don't think to anyone, except maybe Kev has read this before, because this is the one we have spoken about it on the podcast previously, where we did some commissions for like an escape room. And it's maybe been referred to as a couple of different things, like my Viking poem or something. Like that. But I wrote a poem that's a story of from Norse um, mythology, and it's called. Shows how much I deal with poem titles, Mark. You went sit, listen, and drink. I'm like, I've never heard of it. The no. Viking one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know the Viking <laughs> the, one. Some, um, but yeah, so I figured for this, um, it's been spoken about. I've never actually read it. I'm curious to hear what one folk think, and two, oh, what a better way to start a happy hour of drinking thing. Than with a poem that tells you to um so um i'm gonna yeah i'm, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna give this one a a read for you guys let's just move it here all right okay so yeah so this is this is sit listen and drink and i'm, I'm gonna take that prompt uh, okay Sit and listen to the lore master's tale. Sit and listen and drink. Gather around fire, grab meat and mead, and heed the word of the skald. It begins with mighty Thor as he awakens from his floor to find the location of his hammer is something he knows no more. Panicking, he searched his home. Weapon rack raided, couch cushions did he sift but it's a giant storm summoning hammer and it's kind of hard to miss. And so set off hammerless hero, feeling rather naked, but not concerned if anyone asked why he would pull a trickster and fake it. But not one would see through his seamless acts of deception for he was slick and stealthy. None had such keen perception. Where is your hammer? Said a small voice from behind. I know exactly where it is. But Loki saw through his lies. Come with me, he sighed. This is bigger than your reckless pride, and I won't die at giant hand if word reaches their side. Loki soon confirmed suspicion in the form of giant Thrym, who within, who even within his kin was known, in short, to be a colossal simpleton. Despite his dense nature, he held the power position. Eight miles in earth was hammer hidden, its return, but one condition, to be wed to Freya, a wife of Asgardian disposition. Now say what you want about Thrym, he was neither smart, handsome, or charismatic, but to anger Thor for marriage, who says giants can't be romantic? Devise a different plan, I don't care how long we sit, Ragnarok will come before I wed that half-wit. Loki stood before the Aesir. We have discussed for many hours, but my plan remains best. What if we put Thor in a dress? The plan seems so simple. Disguise Thor in satin and lace, and once Hammer is back in hand, well, Mjolnir could marry Thrym's face. So now just picture the pair. Brides made Loki in lace and leather, God of thunder sporting a fetching linen and fur number. But what's a wedding without a show, a band without musician? And this plan did not account for Thor's eating exhibition. An entire ox they did devour, ate salmon then did eat, shiny plates left lit clean, no morsel left to speak. Even all the dainty dishes did God of Thursday's feast and washed it down with Three barrels of mead like some savage linen-covered beast. But despite his future wife's display, Thrym's lust remained unchanged, and so, as promised, at the altar he returned a giant's bane. However, his happiness was fleeting. As much to his surprise, Loki pulled back the veil, revealing Thor's disguise. Now, it's unclear if thunderous crack came from hammer or from skull, but over the next few moments, Thor performed a red, levit, wet, red wedding level cull. And so our story ends, blood-stained wedding wear, as Thor looked to his hammer and thought, maybe I should get a spare. These beings, we send our prayers to the afterlife, our link, 
So raise a horn to eternal lords, sit and listen and drink. <laughs> that was excellent. Cheers, Mark. That is Thank beautiful. You. I want to say before we go any further, this is Loud Poets Happy Hour. And as Mark is saying, we very much encourage everyone to have a drink. But we at Loud Poets love all beverages. So if your drink is Prosecco, if it is chamomile tea, if it is milk, if it is, I was about to say blood. What have you boys done to me? Don't drink blood. Anything else we are all good with. We play uh, a vampire uh, tabletop role play yeah. game. I just want to explain that before anyone thinks anything stranger. Drink what you want and drink responsibly if you're drinking. There we go. Like, there we go. But Mark, that that is truly excellent. I, I do so love a, a longer, foreign locus. I apologize. Like, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I love you. You do that so often. It's like you're really good at taking an existing story or whatever and twisting it out yeah. or taking oh, like an abstract true. idea and doing narrative. It's true good. Norse story. Giant steals the hammer and they're like, right, let's dress up Thor in a dress. That's the whole plan. And it works. It, it's pretty <laughs> it beautiful. works. It's, it's, it's nonsense. It's good fun. But yeah, that's it's yeah, a silly one to do. And um, yeah, nice to actually give that a read to someone. Cheers. Nice, nice. Very cool. I have sort of the perfect segue from it. Um, and again, Madam Bex is currently trapped somewhere outside of Leith, uh, so cannot be joining us. However, Poetry for Cows is still here. So I'm going to read a poem for Bex. And I, I thought that was a lovely segue because the one that I've picked out to read is also a retelling of a myth. Or is it fact? Who knows? Oh, no. Uh, so this <laughs> this is by Beck Sherwood. Please do check out her absolutely beautiful debut pamphlet, Poetry for Cows. Uh, and this is Villanelle for Jack's Cow. My story still has not been told, so now I'll let you know. I'm the cow that Jack sold. His mother wanted me swapped for gold. We walked to town so slow. My story still has not been told. Jack, Jack gave me to a man so old and left with beans to sow. I'm the cow that Jack sold. When Jack had wandered down the road, the old man's magic made us glow. My story still has not been told. His spells were a sight to behold. I helped his powers grow. I'm the cow that Jack sold. Such magic I could not control. I had to let it go. Now my story has been told. I'm the cow that Jack sold. That well, is uh, Beck Sherwood, Villanelle for Jack's cow. It's it'll goodness. never, it'll never not be hilarious that Bex, a person with no interest in cows, wrote an entire pamphlet for cows. It'll still yep. always be the best. <laughs> Look, and I know you're going to say it's it's in the name, but why is it that every villanelle sounds incredibly sinister? It is true. Like, even the line, I'm the cow that Jack sold, sounds like he's not happy. About, they are not happy about it. Would like, you, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't be happy about that. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the new person was super nice. Jack sold him for beans. How good could they have been to the cow? It's true. I think, yeah, I think it's in the repetition. That yeah, constant, like, it's, it's the... it feels creeping, right? There's something yeah. kind of clawing to it. Because when I first heard that form, Naparama 2020 was one of the ones. The first thing I was trying to think of is, yeah, is that one repeating line? And all I could think of was the Joker with one bad day. And that was just... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm, comes stuff. like a mantra yeah kev mm. would you be up for sharing a poem so, yeah, with i was us? i was gonna read something but i might change it then because to keep it in fitting with what you guys have just done but, but then again we should clarify happy hour is not all about retelling of myths although that would be a great spin-off show no, happy yeah. hour <laughs> myths edition oh yeah. i'd host that i'll stick with what i was gonna do then basically i've I, I, like i've really missed uh you know the world and stuff um because it's been ages since i was in it and that's bad and like it's just you know as it gets closer and you start figuring out what you're going to do as things are breaking up and uh i know i'm going to get to kind of go away for a few days with my sister and her husband and our nephew very very excited um and so i was thinking about the last trip i kind of went on uh 
you know, in Scotland, which was with my dad. Uh, I miss sort of hanging out with him terribly. Um, and we had an amazing time in Isla, which is where our family is from originally. And uh, I wrote this poem uh, just after we got back, or maybe while I was there, I'm not sure. But it kind of fits in with happy hour as well, because, oh, sweet Lord, I don't think I've ever drunk so much in my life. Oh, this. is this one? Yes. I'm really concerned because because uh, I've been recently, uh, Kate's parents were like, we'll go to Isla and Kev can show us around. And I'm like, I don't know anything that's there. I can show you where me and my dad parked on the beach and drank for three days. Uh but yeah, so this is, uh, this is Isla. <laughs> I thought I was gonna throw up for a minute. I had to stop the spinning of mine, stomach and everything in it, get out of the van. After all, there is a deposit to be considered. This is the worst hangover I have ever had. Dad pulls over and I crumble to the grass. He laughs, immune to the potentially lethal volume of Jack Daniels we both consumed. This is somehow only the first day of our vacation. We awoke at ticket time to see the ferry we had booked already leaving, cutting across the still glass of the loch at the bottom of the hill, upon which we had got at least three hours of sleep in. By the time of the next boat, that still glass had been replaced by broken shards, rolling and heaving, just keep breathing, keep breathing. And here I am on my knees, surviving Isla, but not truly seeing. A few minutes on solid ground has the nausea clearing, and as panicked inner monologue gives way to actual hearing, there is the unmistakable sound of waves crashing and then receding. I look up and for the first time truly appreciate what I'm seeing. The edge of the world. The empty skyline of absolute freedom. I am so small. But its vastness and power don't make me feel weak or feeble. I know at least four generations have seen what I see now and not one was its equal. We see constant movement, but it's actually so still compared with the passing of people. I climb back in the van, mind soothed, stomach calmed, not feeling quite as awful. Dad simply smiles and points. My spirit sinks as I notice two more amber-filled bottles. Oh, I love that poem so much. That's oh, one of my absolute favorite pieces. And, you know, if, if anyone in our happy hour audience is lucky enough to know the dawn, Kevin's father, you'll, uh, you'll recognize a lot of that poem. You wouldn't believe the absolute rage. We had a, we had a little camper van. <laughs> it was awesome. And we parked up the first night, top of this hill, getting the ferry the next day, and just were boozing. Uh, got to sleep, woke up and to dad, shouted, gop, gop, and like packing away the van as I'm still in a sleeping bag. I'm lucky I didn't get folded into a wall panel. Uh, and then we just see absolute beautiful picturesque under any other circumstance a, a beautiful cool like you know just early summer morning in scotland and you this absolutely glass like still lock and just one ferry just <laughs> cutting away and you're like, ah, ah what can you do nothing uh we go yeah it was brutal but, Worst but drink the only yeah. thing you can do oh tragic and write poems <laughs> oh on that I, note, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna share another poem. It's not one of mine. It's one of Joe Bell's, uh, because I love Joe Bell. Uh, we, Kev and I, I know we we saw Joe Bell at Stanza several years ago, um, and 
I was, yes, shout out to Stanza, uh, Scotland's International Poetry Festival. It is amazing. We love them to bits. We produced their digital festival this year and it was an it absolute was the blast. best festival, Dope. official. Mm -hmm. Sabotage Reviews, the Saboteur Awards did uh, vote it best festival. So yes, we, we love Stanza dearly. Um, and that is where I first saw Joe Bell perform. And I was trying to think of a good sort of inaugural poem for the happy hour. And this one just really caught in my mind. I remember remember so clearly hearing her perform this poem. Um, and I don't know if I can do it justice because the way that she performed it was as sort of a um, audience interactive poem and she got us to shout out some of the lines and you know this is this is the digital space I can't really do that uh, but I'm gonna give it my all um, and this is called Raising the Roof for Kirsty. Uh, it's about a barn building. Yeah Kev you remember? <laughs> Praise your thousand days of busted knuckles, back ache, neck ache, dusted wire wool hair, of eating cheese amongst the rubble, reading Haney in your Wellingtons, and never a clean dress to go dancing in. Praise the day we gathered at your door to hoist a pine branch to the eaves and sang, a ruddy choir under your paint stick baton, the roof is finished, the roof is finished, till we were hoarse enough for beer and flames. Drank each other to a charcoal drowse, settling in half-wrapped corners, here a one, there a swaddled pair, easy on the floor as hounds inside a mead hall, stationed to sleep out the hours of thunder. And as water found a way between the pitchy ridge and roof slates, sending piss-thin streams to wet the flagstones by her head, praise the one, whichever one it was, who, laughing in half-sleep, got up and put the kettle on, began the chorus that we took up one by one. The roof is leaking, the roof is leaking waking, placing buckets, drinking tea hungover. And what's a song for, Kirsty? anyway, if not to keep the roof on? So thank you to Jo Bell. Uh, please do check out her book, Kith. It's full of absolutely brilliant poems like that one. She's an amazing performer um, and she lives on a boat, which is awesome. So yeah, oh, shout out Jo Bell. Yep. She was she was the canal poet laureate. Oh. Which is just the best poet laureate to be. <laughs> Joe feel, Joe Bell is who I aspire to be. The only can the only competitor I think I think you can go for the for the canal poet laureate is that time Stuart Kenny bought like an Aldi canoe. He could be was, a little it was a canoe little laureate. canoe. Little yep. it was a little canoe. I apologize. It was a little canoe. Yeah. It's it's, I, I think I maybe is Andy Strachan got an Aldi poem or is that a little as well? Angie right. Strachan has the fantastic Strachan poem about Aldi. About yep. Aldi. Yeah, right. Cool. I mean, Aldi. But Joe Gilbert has done a commission piece for Little. So ah, I we have many connections us <laughs> so poets many. to the bargain superstore. <laughs> Four degrees <laughs> of separation. No, that's ace. I've never heard that one before as well. That's amazing. She's just, oh, she's great. She's yeah. absolutely oh, great. Um, so guys, I hear you asking, these challenges of which you speak, where will they come from? What are they? What can we tell you to write? So this is where, I know I've mentioned it many times, the poetic pint glass of poetic challenges. But I figure, Rolls you know- the tongue every time though, Kate. It really so it's does. It's not been very noticeable. It's no, good. no, it's it's very subtle. Figure it's time to present it. So uh, Mark, can you can you sing a song for for the poetic pint glass of poetic challenges to come out to? Um, I, I, I won't do a song, but I'll do it in in the form of of, of like in, in honor yep. of the Jimmy Jab games in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Poetic pint of poetic challenges. You can fit three pints in here, or what we call a banshee labyrinth pint. 
<laughs> in the Edinburgh Fringe trade. Uh, so yeah, this this we figured we could use a hat, but why would you use a hat when you can do this? Uh, so this is where we're going to keep our challenges. And as I was saying before, the way um, that it will work is if you sign up to our Patreon uh, for as little as a pound. Put that away from you, Ken. That's brilliant. Yep, yep. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and the big old echo off of that. It's a powerful poetic pint class of poetic challenges. Yeah. Uh, if you so sign up to our Patreon for as little as a pound a month, you get to give us challenges. But obviously, currently, the Poetic Pine Glass of Poetic Challenges is empty, so we need to fill it with some things. So, guys, I have uh, some little slips of paper and a little Sharpie. Uh, do you want to start the Poetic Pine Glass of Poetic Challenges by adding some of your own challenges in? Mark, do you want to start us off? What, what's a challenge that we could put in? What's something that you would like to do or well, like quite, to make other people do? Well, I quite like the idea. I quite like some of the ideas that we float around. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff. And, um, but because again, in a writer's group, the first thing I'm going to do, you know, when exp exposed to new possibilities, new horizons is do something I'm very comfortable with. So I'm going to suggest potentially one of the things we did earlier is, is rewriting a myth or as, rewriting a, poem, a, myth. as a rewriting a myth. Of a myth, nice. you know, like something nice. rewrite as you interpret it. Obviously, I didn't, I, I didn't change really much in the one I did there, but like changing some bits, different perspective. I'd like to, I'd like to hear like, what I'd, like, I'd love to hear a Helena Troy poem, but I would, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to, you know, and myth, whatever you, you take that to be, that can be like a wee story about you know, whether myth. sheep can look up, you know. Good. All right. Just so everyone sees, right? Wait, that is going in the pint glass. Boom. Can I, can I go? Because I have one that yep. literally I associate directly to that. Right. Yep. So, go for it. Because I, I like the myth thing. I like when okay. you've done a galley. I like it as a, as a technique. I remember seeing K Tempest perform Tiresias yes. uh, when they did their book launch. At, um, uh, Bongo Club in Edinburgh. I was just insane. It's like a twenty-minute retelling of Tiresias and K. Stunning. If you, if you're, you've never seen them or heard them, just has this relentless kind of pace and tone that just oh, it, it, amazing uh, performance. Having said that, I like that specifically because as well, I didn't know a lot about the story of Tiresias, and there is something that I'm less of a fan of. And this is not to say. I don't like any poems about it. For there, there are good examples, right? But some myths are way more used than other myths. For example, Icarus, right? And like I love, I love, for example, Casey Bailey's poem Wax, which we have on the channel. Mm. Stunning. And if that was the only poem I'd ever heard about Icarus, I'd, I'd be a happy man. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just I, I think. I think it's it's too done and so what mine is going to be not specifically Icarus is you need to write a poem with your favorite poetic cliche so mm. like like another okay. good one that bugs everyone is that is to say right in poems so you do Wait, some with your favorite cliche or, or your, your, your least or your, favorite or your, cliche. Mm. With, with a big cliche like, with a big poetry cliche yeah, cool. or just call it poetry cliche poem Oh, yep. a cliche poem. Uh, like, yeah, right. Everyone's annoyed about that just now. The whole, uh, here, I've just done a complicated metaphor. That is to say, and then an explanation of the metaphor you've just done. Uh, I have a poem that's literally that. Yep. Called yeah. out. Called yeah. out. Again, I'm not saying it, that's the thing with cliche. Cliche becomes cliche because it's something oh, it's, it's done a lot. therefore overused and then misused and then becomes cliche, right? So like, I, this is not a judgment on anyone's specific stuff. We've all, we all do it, right? Everyone mentioned like hands just constant or the moon, right? You're just like whatever it is. There's so many things that we all come back to and rely on. Um, and so, yeah, I would just, I would like to see everyone's take on poetry cliche. Poetry cliche, okay. Mm, so, yep, write a poem with a poetry cliche. All right, so that's gonna go into the pint glass. Uh, so, Bex, uh, yeah, gave gave a suggestion in advance, um, and you know we've we've talked a lot about Bex's style so far on this show, and um, you know she she decided to do something different, you know, really get out of her norm, get out of her comfort zone in proposing this challenge. That's a way um, you can go, I guess. So write yeah, everyone, uh, yeah, write a cow poem. 
I don't believe Bex is giving you this because I don't think Bex ever wants to write another cow poem. I say if that, that no, that's, yeah, if that's that worse wins, for her than anyone, then yeah, there's another cow poem I bet, and I think she's written them all. Yeah, I, I don't think she's got left in her. To be fair, that's quite hard though, because if yeah, she's written them all. What have we got left? To, we we not got much left to write. <laughs> in the in uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a cue from one of the greatest poets ever, and my poem is gonna go moo 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 moo. <laughs> I'm going to do Are you both. talking about Edwin Morgan? No, I'm talking about Baldrick. Baldrick, the boom, oh boom, boom, boom. There's a great Edwin Morgan poem called uh, Song of the Loch Ness Monster, which is a sound poem and also a concrete poem. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the in the video description below. It's it's excellent. Um yeah, I'm I'm going to propose for this week. I, I was really inspired by one of the poems that Bex did during Naparimo. Um, It was her Sestina uh, and it was dark and creepy and horrifying and from the perspective of a villain. So that inspired me. And so I'm going to go uh, for this challenge. I'm going to say write a poem from the perspective of a monster. Oh. Whichever way you want to interpret that, whatever monstrous means in this context. Oh, um, as well. oh I can I can segue quite nicely from that one. Yeah, uh, a, a different type of monster, but a monster nonetheless. I want everyone to write a wrestling promo poem. <laughs> how? How did you say? Check the clock. How this? long did it take? Th- oh, it took about 35, 40 minutes to have the first wrestling reference. Yep. Okay. Just to show I'm putting this in the hat, the monster, and then I'll I'll write down your wrestling. I was just about to say, so what's there going to be four prompts? Because that's going to be 50 50 cow poem at that point. And I'm like, oh, crikey. Yeah. No, do you want wrestling- to propose one more, Mark? And well, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, make us even. Right, so while, you're, while you're writing wrestling promo. Okay. Um, all right. Um, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do something because all of the, the, the they've all been going a certain way, and so I am gonna try do something a bit more. Right, wrestling from. I'm gonna try doing something, you know, maybe a, a bit tangential because again, I do want to do a thing, and so I'm like, this is a new series, this is a a new thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with write a poem in the style of a TV advert. The idea being Ooh. is then basically we have three, maybe four potential sponsors. <laughs> If we can't get poems out of it, <laughs> amazing. Yes. That's so oh, good. I'm only in poetry to sell out. I, I get it. It's harder yeah. than I thought it would be. Oh, so much. I really yeah. thought it would be easier. We've been trying for years to sell Just out, saying, Mark. These could be beer 52 beers, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's going in. Write poem in the style of a TV yeah. advert. Did, did Bex give you more than one? Or... Did, uh, 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 Bex only only gave me that one, but that um, one. I mean, there there it shouldn't be, be allowed any. She's not here. <laughs> no, none for her. That's for, hang on, yeah. So it's gonna, if it's gonna be, so she's not gonna be here for the next one or to do no, the challenge. No, but you know, she gets power. I'm but, allotting her power. Uh, okay. I get this to give people fixed. power. I, I have power. Is, I, I can see where this is going. The writing's on the wall, Gally. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, host, do you have another in- impartial prompt you want us to do? I mean, there's so many. Do. There's so many. Part of me just really wants to write Helen of Troy on a card and drop it in there. Because you that's, can choose not to do it. That's you. You did that to yourself. Don't oh. give that to us. Don't give that to you guys. Okay, that that's fair. That's fair. Um. If people you don't understand, what? Katie has been writing a Helen of Troy <laughs> yeah, poem for about a year. Month, it's on the Nap podcast. And <laughs> if you, she is, she did about a, a, an extra dissertation all on Helen of Troy rather than just writing a poem. And then that poem has never surfaced. How many words, Kate? Uh, I wrote, it, it was 37 pages worth of poetry oh, that madness. I wrote. Madness. Yeah, no. so it wasn't good. You know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna propose? I'm gonna do um, what I call the Sarah Kay slash Andrea Gibson challenge because this is a prompt that's used so often and it is my favorite poetry prompt and I really want us to do it at some point. It is to write a love letter from one part of your body to another part of your body. And it's weird and amazing, and you end up with these incredible poems, and the lads hate it, so I'm definitely putting it in. Yep, good. So... I just, I just think it's uh, insensitive to people with body dysphoria issues, Kate. I think that's all. 
I'm just saying you're giving me an opportunity to write something about my body. And where do you think this? No, no. Oh no! There you go. And no. that's and that's no. It's fun when I when I've when I've done that prompt before. It does because I've had that question. Like when we've done this in workshops and stuff, people are like, "What if I don't like any bit of my body?" And you're like, "Then get introspective, right? Think about yeah. your mind as a part of your body, yeah. or your you know your like. There, there's always something you can find. And I think it is actually because I make a flippant joke there. I think it's good for people who do have issues with their body as well because it's like it's nice to highlight something that you do, like to actually have to find that mm-hmm. thing and highlight it yeah. and talk about it i think it's good and you can also you know I, th- I think there are obvious ways of going about that you know from my bum to my hips or whatever but you can write a love letter from your femur to your retina right it can yeah. be really abstract it can be weird i did one once that was i think from my uh, what is it, your patella, your kneecap to the uh, little hairs on the inside of your ear. And it's the weirdest poem I've ever written, but it was amazing to write. So How did those yeah. two even meet to start sending letters to each other? Well, they're connected. They're in your body. They're, they're in your body. Like, what Mark, you got to open your mind. Everyone's on you know? Zoom now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it might be. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah, this, I think, I think that's pretty healthy. We, we got a bunch of suggestions in here. And guys, I mean, there there's suggestions, but really we want this to be full to the top. We want to have tons of prompts and ideas and we don't just want to be, you know, messing with each other and giving each other challenges. This is where you as the people who watch this show and who enjoy Loud Poets uh, come in. So this I should say is an unfunded show. It's off our own backs. Um, and we're really relying on the support of our Patreon to put it together. So basically, how you can take part is sign up to the Patreon, a little is a pound a month, and then you can put in challenges into the Poetic Pint class of Poetic Challenges. Uh, If we pick out your challenge, you get to put another one in. Um, So super easy, super fun, and it also ties into a broader project that we're doing with our Patreon. So Kev, I'm going to pass it over to you to talk about that, because this is something that's, that's quite important to us that we've been really focusing on lately. Yeah, uh, folks, folks that know us, you know, that have been following uh, Loud Poets or, you know, I Am Loud uh, for a while will know that we were really happy this year. We got some uh, successful funding and obviously the return to form season we did uh, was was funded by National Lottery through Creative Scotland, as is the current season of the Loudcast. And it means a huge amount to us and it allows us to to put uh, a great deal of time and effort into those shows and, and, and projects and make sure they're up to a certain standard. And we you know when you can do it for one thing you want to do it for everything especially when it comes to things around accessibility and so one of the great things about doing return to form the way it was or doing the loudcast the way it is is there is money for us to do closed captioning and transcribing and that might you know if you're listening to this now or watching us now it might not affect you specifically i run our youtube page and i see the analytics about seven or eight percent of people that watch our videos um, use closed captioning and so it is kind of important for them uh, it, it's handy to be able to have but it takes days uh, to, to transcribe something like an hour-long podcast uh, and we've been doing that off our own back with the, the NaPoWriMo ones and it's just not feasible to continue uh, we, we have too much work especially with you know things coming back and opening up so that's what we're asking is if people sign up to the patreon it's not you know paying us to do anything extra and it's all going to go to closed captioning everything that we put out um on any platform because there's third party sites you can use that it doesn't take our manpower it takes our our people power it takes our um you know money and (laughs) that would be where you guys come in so if you enjoy the show and you like what we do and checking it out and you want to help uh, support and make it more accessible for people, then yeah, a quid, you know, gets you early access to everything we put out. Uh, Three quid gets you some, you know, exclusive stuff, Loudcast Extra and all that. And as we go back to live events, there's going to be more coming out for the sort of other tiers where you get on-demand stuff. So there's going to be you know, full sets or full sections of shows and things like that going up. And then what we're hoping is that if people are engaging with this, uh, with the the happy hour and wanting to get, you know, more involved and do a kind of writing club type thing, uh, there's like a top 10 quid tier and that's going to get you access to like workshops and stuff with Kate. Um, if you if you saw our Return to Form workshop ones, there is one for ekphrastic poetry uh, or a re- yeah, like Frasty yeah, Poetry that isn't yeah. available anywhere other than on the Patreon. Uh, so those are worth 
check it out and yeah it does it, it like i said it doesn't pay us it just kind of helps make everything a bit better which would be nice we have to pay for a zoom account and i'm not going to go into it forever but yeah, you, get the, <laughs> you get the gist I think especially as we're sort of coming out of this period, um, we want to make sure that what we've learned through this period and the steps that we've taken to become more accessible to a broader swath of people, that that doesn't just get forgotten. Um, but being realistic about it, it does take more time and money. So it would mean the world, honestly, to us if you guys wanted to support some of that effort. And of course, you get a lot of really cool stuff and you get to mess with us, which um, really isn't that the joy that keeps the world spinning. So so yes. Uh, oh, so I have oh, a question. If oh. I sign up to the Patreon, do I do I get to put in another suggestion? <laughs> oh. I'm gonna say yes. Ooh. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. I think I forgot to unsubscribe when I from before, so I might. Uh, anyway, never mind me. Never mind. Just a thought. <laughs> just a curiosity. <laughs> yeah. mm. 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 It's an idea. Well, I I believe we've come to this time. Then, Mark, do you want to sing sing again? So, am I singing to the to the yep, poetic yep. So, pint glass of poetic challenger? So I think it's time to draw one. I'm gonna write. Oh, so you want to ruffle it up a bit? Or do you want to ruffle if it this up is a bit? Hers, if one of hers comes straight out, fix. So the oh. way it's gonna work is is we're gonna it, I sh before before we we do it. Uh, I'm gonna pick two, and then you guys get to vote. Uh, when I say you guys, I mean the viewers, not Mark and Kev. They have no power here. Wait, uh, wait. So the viewers will get to vote on which one you would prefer. So I'm going to pick out two, and then we're going to tell you how to vote. So, all right, little, little drum roll singing, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in edit. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. The first one. Oh! oh. Okay. Nice. I'm not, I'm, nice. Not, I'm, not, I'm not mad about that one. I'm not mad about that one. All right. So option one, write a poem with a poetry cliche. One of Kev's suggestions. I swear if the wrestling one comes out next, not going to be happy. Oh, what Clean a, sweep. Not going to be happy. What a bluff that would be. What a, All right. What a turn. I could have fixed this. What am I doing? All right. Clean sweep for Kev. Oh! Galley. Oh, Rewrite a myth. Ooh. Nice. I mean, to be fair, even with that, you could still do. I mean, I think either way, you could still do potentially an Icarus one if you were so dead set. Kev. I'll tell you what, if it comes up myth, I'm going to write Icarus and I'm going to rewrite it so it's not very interesting so people can stop fucking using it. <laughs> You're going to write a terrible poem deliberately for half He made hour. some wax wings. He flew really high. Everyone was chuffed. Now everyone has wax wings. Get over it. I mean, you could summarize that story as he made a thing that didn't work. <laughs> We're missing all the nuance, Galley. Right, so the, these are the two options. So guys, what we need you to do is to vote on which one you would like these guys to write. So rewrite a myth or write a poem using a poetry cliche. So the way that you can do that, we've got a poll on our Twitter. Uh, we have uh, the comments below here. So you can comment saying either myth or cliche. Um, and we're going to take into account the Twitter poll and the comments here uh, in deciding which one. We'll count them up and then we will announce that on social media on Monday, which one has won. So and the poll will also be up on Instagram. So if you want to go vote there. Yes. Yes. So all of that information is in the description below. Uh, we've got links to all of our sites and all of that jazz. Uh, so please do vote. Please do tell us what you want to see. Um, and it's going to be pretty great. Uh, and as I said, I'm going to be doing a top tips video on both of these, which will come out on the Thursday. So guys, are you feeling feeling excited? Any preferences? Are you sticking with what you put in Cliche. the hat? I mean, of the ones we put in, man. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> Don't yeah. vote for Mark. I, I was, this has became personal very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's not about the prompt. It's about which no. one of us you prefer, me or Mark. Oh, God. That's what it is. This is... What have I done? What have I really, really, really? Yeah, I got nothing else, Kev. <laughs> cliche, cliche. I'm gonna just make a gif out of you just shouting cliche and just use that for everything from now on. That's that's Kevin McLean for you. Right. So guys, this wraps up this primary first episode of Loud Poets Happy Hour. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. 
that was excellent timing, Gally. Excellent. I know. Timing. I, f- I finished it at the end. I'm very proud of that. Well done. Very well done. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, hopefully, the shenaniganry is the right level of shenaniganry. Shenaniganry is not a word. It is. It I've is made it a word. There's no language way it's a is word. fungible and, and the poetic fluid. pint glass of poetic cha- anyway, no. It's great. It's great. I'm good at words. It's literally my career. Uh, so please come back, Bex. Please. <laughs> I'll still be the host. <laughs> So yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Before this gets any sillier, uh, we are going to sound off, but please vote. Please do sign up to the Patreon and give us really, really wacky challenges. We would love that. But for now, we are signing off. Everybody say cheers. 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 Cliche. Clearly superior choice. Clearly superior choice. Oh, Lord. What have I done? Thank you so much for joining us for Happy Hour. If you enjoyed the show, please do give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you want to take it one step further, consider signing up to our Patreon. For as little as a pound a month, you get to submit challenges to the Poetic Pint Glass of Poetic Challenges, and you get lots of other fantastic perks. Thank you so much, guys.